What I want to talk about on today's call is the state of marketing, the power of focus, Facebook advertising, the best three sales questions, video marketing, the importance of faces. This call is being recorded. All right. So we've gone through the new curator several times. You guys have gotten a couple demos from Jimmy. You know, Yana did a great walkthrough. And one of the things that we've gotten is feedback from the company over time is, you know, a lot of times we roll stuff out and, you know, a, like a small circle of people knows it's happening. So obviously Jimmy and I know what's going on and Andrew and maybe Steve, but we want to make sure that every employee across every division feels like they understand this big change. So my goal with this webinar or this kind of quick little screen share is I want to be able to answer any questions Annette or Jess or Jillian or Jared or Tyler or any of the marketers have about the new pro, uh, platform. So the first question is one that Annette and I talked about, which is basically, um, okay, so here's the question. The question is, how will the old curator website import into the new site. So as you guys know, we've built pages. A lot of our clients have blogged. We obviously create a ton of content. And so I wanted to definitely show you guys kind of what does it look like when the content pulls in before you manipulate it. So if somebody has a bunch of blog posts or if they build to love your listing page or if they have a, you know, why hire us page, we obviously have some of the stock pages like the about page or the testimonials page, but I, I wanted to show you guys how that's going to look and I'm going to pull it up in two tabs. So the first one, uh, I'm going to hide, but the first one is how it looks right now. So this is a blog post that's live on the site now. Uh, let me, the URL is probably different. So let me find it. And this was, uh, we do this a lot. You guys know we do the client testimonials or sort of, um, you know, how our curator clients using our platform in an innovative way. So this is the original article. Uh, got to scroll down a little, it's a little older one. But this is the original article about Kindle. Jeez, it's really old. Uh, next one, it'll be here. Here we go. So this is the article we did uh, about Kindle. And this is the old site. So you can see it's got the mega photo. It's got the headline. It's got the social share icons. It's got the author. It's got, you know, the five minute read. And then it's got all the content. So you can see there's an image. There's a bunch of copy. There's another image. There's more copy. There's another image. There's a little kind of disclaimer and, and a little outro. So this is what it looked like on the old curator. And then this is what it looks like on the new curator. So I'll just tab between those really quickly. You, it, as you guys can see, it's not that different. So you still have a mega photo, you still have a big headline, right? That, that is not that different. And then as I scroll through here, you can still see Paul Hagee, you can still see five minute read. Uh, but by the way, Steve, if you're on, like that probably should say five minute read, not five minutes read. Um, the share icons are still there, you know, Facebook and tweet. Uh, and then if you look, it actually pulled it in better than it was. Because if you look at this photo in the old platform, it was kind of off to the left and it wasn't full width. Same with the other ones. So upon the initial pull in, it actually made the picture better, made it fit perfect. You can see the copy is a lot easier to read. If you look at the font on this one, and the font on this one, just much more readable. But see how all the images actually lined up perfectly. All the copies there. Here's the links, right? So uh, with the new hex code, like we mentioned, you can choose the colors that you want. So we chose the red. So that's down here at the bottom. That's also what the link colors will be. So it looks like based on what I'm seeing, you know, you've got a link up here to Flagler Coastal Properties. You've got a link down here. Uh, to a couple things at the bottom. And in the old one, it was the same thing. Here's your link. It was just teal. And here's your links at the bottom. So based on seeing that, I, I hope you guys feel really good about like what the stuff that we already built will look like. You know, based on this sample size of one, the old stuff looks better 
just by importing it into the new site. Pages, posts, the majority of the content will behave in a very similar way. Great question, Annette. All right. Let me go back a little bit here. Thank you for all the questions. Here we go. So Jess says, how are the magic moments calculated and can they be changed back to the old way? Uh, and I don't know exactly what you mean by that, Jess, but basically magic moments are changing a lot. So of the, if you look at the new platform, people are already used to brain. People are already used to the A. They're already used to the B. So the big things that are changing is the C and then the magic moments, which is what Jess just asked about. Now, I, I do have to say, Jess, that as a salesperson and as the people that actually use magic moments, which is sales, the old way was not the best way. So the old way would trigger magic moments based on uh, people looking at a few pages, based on people return visiting. You know, they did have to be in kind of a certain stage. But the way it'll work now is that it, inside of Magic Moments, there's so much more info. And so to create people that you want a Magic Moment for, before you couldn't turn them on or turn them off, basically. Now, all you do, Jess, is when you, when you follow someone, you hit this bell. And anybody that you follow, they're going to go into this little tab that says People I Follow. And then anyone that uh, is in that tab, you get Magic Moments for. So you could kind of think of like when we import all of their leads originally, we would probably make like everybody that's hot and everybody that's pending, you kind of already be following them. And then from there, you could unfollow them with one click or you could add new people to follow. But the problem in the past, Jess, was that Magic Moments didn't make it clear enough the quality of the lead. So now you're getting magic moments. You can see there's a new event. Grant Freer just opened an email. The old magic moments, Jess, they didn't even trigger if someone opened an email. It required the person to visit. So look at the new magic moments. And the first magic moment is an opened email. Opened email. The third one, opened email. You can see Paul is viewing the testimonials right now. But ultimately... The number of quality magic moments is going to go through the roof because now we're giving magic moments for email opens. You can see Jillian right at the top. She's looking at the Love Your Job page. I'm guessing Jillian just saw that page in a Facebook ad. So if Jillian was a lead and I know she's on the site and she's got a thousand points, that's what these points are. These points are tracking every time Jillian ever did anything on our site. So I've got everything she's ever done in order forever, but we just roll that all up into like a thousand points. Another one, Grant, he just opened the email again. So this is the new magic moments. And just, just to finish that up, there's absolutely no way we would ever go back to the old ones. I, I don't know why we would. They're so basic compared to the new ones. Um, so I do think that that's something to keep in. Yeah, we can tell how many times Jillian has looked at her own bio page. Yes, Jillian, we're tracking that rigorously. Um, cool. So next question. Yeah, so basically, Jessica, what's going to happen is right now when you go to build a list, right, when you go to Blast and you go to create a Blast and you go to create a list, you've got things like when were they on the site? What is the stage? How long in the database? Like you have more options than almost anyone on the planet already with which to filter your list and send to. But you're, you're absolutely right, Jess. What we're going to do is you're going to be able to filter by people I follow. You're going to be able to filter by people with points, right? So you could say, you know, I want to send an email to just the people I follow. Or I want to send an email to just the people with over a thousand points. So the 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 filters in Magic Moments will definitely become filters in Brain. I hope that answers the question. All right, let's see. <clears throat> All right, Tyler. 
So Tyler says, can you show the new ways to create landing pages with the new site? A absolutely. And I think this will be something that we all have to kind of wrap our heads around out of the gates is when you go to create something, okay, we're not saying create a post, create a page, create a landing page. We've, we've unified that experience. So the first thing you would do there, Tyler, is just hit create content. And then inside of the settings of the content, you're going to tell it what it is here. See that? It's either a page or a post. So that way you don't have to go to two different places to do basically the same thing. Now, what's really cool, uh, and I'll go back, and I'm not going to build a page from scratch, but let's say we wanted to uh, look at a page that's already built, preview it. So this is a, a page, and let's say I wanted to turn this page into a landing page. So I just wanted to focus on the form. I didn't want to focus on anything but getting people to fill that form out. Well, the, the way you would do it, Tyler, is you would build the page. So you would build a page like this. It could be a seller page, a buyer page, a listing page. It can be any kind of template you want. And then if you want to use it as a landing page, you actually, well, one thing you can do is you see the calls to action. You could actually go in and edit those calls to action. So you could say, I want this to be a Facebook subscribe. And then I want to align that in the middle. So that's actually very easy to do. Colors, videos, a lot, lot of options here. But you basically can uh, change the call to action here. In theory, I could get, and Steve, please make note if I'm screwing up a real page. I, I feel bad. I might have just messed something up. Uh, I don't know which ones I can change. But in theory, you've now got, you know, the equivalent of a landing page. The problem, Tyler, is that if we preview this, if we preview this, it's not a landing page because landing pages don't have all these buttons, right? Landing pages don't have menus. Landing pages don't have footers and social media icons. These are all the places that when people go to a landing page, you lose them. You lose them in the header and you lose them in the footer. So what you'll do now, Tyler, is you'll create a page and then you'll simply go into the settings and you'll say that you want to hide the header and hide the footer. And that's it. So now I don't think the preview works yet. But now it would be the exact same page minus the header minus the footer. Minus the header and the footer means it's a landing page. It means the only thing you could do on this page would be subscribe. So I, I hope that answers your question, Tyler. The other thing I could show you is you could start from scratch. So you could say, okay, the first object we want is a hero. Drag it over. We want that hero to be a video, right? Go back. So now we've got our hero and we've got our button and our call to action. Then we can go in and say, well, we want that to be the Facebook subscribe, right? So we're here, we've got our video. Then we would go in and add the video, right? Upload video. So you, you can literally start from nothing and then you can end up, you know, with basically a full blown uh, page. You know, you can create any kind of landing page you can imagine, which is where it gets a little scary because sometimes you have to actually use, use your strength. So anyway, you guys can kind of get the idea there. And then if I wanted to go deeper, Tyler, I could go in and say, add another object. And this object can be, uh, let's say, uh, reviews. I want to put some reviews on my testimonials page. Drag it over, wait for the green bar, and then you've got the reviews there too. I could say, okay, well, I want to also add another image at the bottom, right? I want to do a, a preview of my... Uh, seller page boom now i've got another one i can manage the images of that object uh, if i wanted to add text like above it right i can start here uh, add that above and just say you know best landing page ever right um so you you, you sort of have two options tyler you can start from scratch but we are going to still have the functionality and steve i don't know if you can help me out in the chat with that but I know that we're still going to have the functionality, guys, where you can go to the front of the article and do slash magic. And that is still going to give you the landing page options, too. So in theory, Tyler, you could do everything you've always done and then do this. Or you could start from scratch and just put buttons and calls to action and remove the header footer. Either way.
Yep. Yeah, Tyler, I, I, I just answered that. So there is going to be a way. But what will happen, Tyler, is think about it like this. Picture this screen right here. Okay, picture, um, picture this screen with this um, open. No, not this piece, sorry. This piece. So what'll happen now, Tyler, is if you go in and you put slash magic right here, it's gonna take you right here to make those choices. So it's not gonna be like a separate page. I, I don't know if Steve has any insight there. Um, I don't know if he's tried that yet. Um, or if he has a link to like how slash magic works with the new platform. But definitely something we need to get a little video of or show here while everyone's on or, or at least get with Jimmy uh, about how that's going to work. But the idea, Tyler, is that you hit slash magic and then it would just land you here. And then the, the choices you usually have would be right here. Now, let me show you guys one other really cool feature, because as you guys know, at Curator, we try to change our homepage quite a bit. So we'll have times where we actually want the conversion code to be the home page, or we want the sales page to be the home page, or we want the uh, you know curated or whatever we happen to be working on water cooler. So one of the other really cool features that I'm excited about is when you build a page. So this is our testimonials page. You can go into the settings of the page, and you can actually make this your home page. So with one click, I could turn any page into the home page, and then I could just turn that off again to use the old home page. So if you guys build a love your listings, yes, it's possible. Why hire us? Uh, if you guys build these really great pages, um, you can then turn that page or that post into the home page with one click. So then, you know, basically the testimonials would just be curator.com. So very cool little feature there, um, for sure. Let me see if Steve had anything to add. I think he, I think he's actually off the call now. So, yeah, Annette, just send me a little message in Slack to check on uh, how Slash Magic is going to work. All right, let me go back. Yeah, I think what your question there, Jess, I think this was asked on the call with Yana. Um, uh, basically, Jess is, I think I answered the first part, but she's saying, can we have a customizable landing page? Basically, can we choose what information leads are required to fill out instead of Facebook Lite in full? That, that wouldn't be a custom landing page. That would be a custom form. And I do think that Yana and the team is working on custom forms which basically means instead of asking, you know, name, phone, email, time frame, price range, you could say, what's your first kid's name? What's your third kid's name? What's your favorite color? What's your, you know, favorite job you've ever, like basically custom questions on the landing pages will be a feature in the future, but at launch, it'll just be the same forms we have now. Uh, here's a great question from Annette. What pages will small businesses have versus what pages will realtors have? And I think that really means kind of out of the gates. And, and it's a great question. If you look at curator.com, guys, basically every curator has a homepage. Every curator site has a blog, no matter what. So you've got a homepage and a blog. Every curator site has a schedule page. So basically a contact page. So you've got a homepage, you've got a blog, You've got a contact page. You're also going to have things like an about page. Like every curator site, if you go to curator.com slash about, every curator site has an about page. If you go to testimonials, another one, every curator site will have testimonials. So if you're a small business, you're going to have a home page, an about page, a blog, a contact page, and a testimonials page. You're basically going to have all the pages that the real estate agents have except the home search pages. So if I show you guys like Callie Dalton's website, here's the about page, which any client will have. Testimonials, any client will have. Contact us, any client will have. 
where it gets different is obviously they wouldn't have like search homes. So realtors have IDX. Obviously, they would have listing details pages, which other people won't. You also have things like home values, which who the hell wants that? We don't need any home value leads. We sell software, right? You also have things like um, the, the, uh, the, well, there was one other one for sure, which is the map, right? Which is like uh, experience dash map, okay? So if you're a realtor, this kind of page is super important. So real estate agents will have the home search, they'll have the listing details, they'll have the seller page, they'll have the experience map. They'll basically have everything they have now. And then small businesses will have everything but those real estate pages. And then we'll add some pages as we see fit. They might need a sales page. They might need a uh, you know hiring page, right? We'll kind of probably end up giving small business clients one or two additional pages based on their needs. But remember, if people's old website has pages, we can recreate those pages too. That, that's an option as well. All right. Uh, here is a question from Jared. Will there be any change to the timing for recording blast stats and creating a template. Specifically, will the process of sending the same email to a different list change? Uh, and I, I think what you're asking there, Jared, is like, how long will it take from the time you send an email until you can turn that into a template and until you can send it to the people that didn't open it? Um, I'm not sure exactly how long that process takes now, um, I'm guessing the reason you're asking is because you want it to be faster. Um, if that's the case, send me a little message in Slack and tell me about how long it takes now um, to see that or what you would like to see changed. But um, as far as the template being ready and sort of who opened and who clicked uh, being denoted, I, I don't know how long that takes now. So I don't know how to answer that, unfortunately. Annette and Jillian sort of asked the same question, which is, when are current clients going to get access to the new curator? And then when do new clients moving forward get access to the new curator? Which I think is a great question. So basically, 100% of the current clients will have access before the end of the year. So that's about six weeks. Over the next six weeks, Every single curator client we already have will, will launch on the new site. The marketer clients are getting it first, but it's not that the marketer clients are getting it. It's that their marketer will get it. And that'll happen sometime this week is the goal. So marketer, the actual marketers will get it first. Then their clients will get it. Then all the clients will get it. So what about new clients? Basically... Anyone who signs up starting tomorrow is going to launch in January on the new platform. Whether they're small business, whether they're real estate, the expectation that we're going to set in sales and in onboarding is going to be that they will launch the first week of January. So we're basically making sure that everybody that's been paying us for years is set up before anybody that's been paying us for days goes live. Uh, Tyler had a great question here. Is the default author going to be the client or Andrew? Um, I don't know if that's a joke or a real question. I'm guessing right now it might be Andrew. I think what, what we always want to have, guys, is like a global login so that if the client were to change their login, you guys could still get in. Um, Obviously, if you log in as Andrew, then you have to sort of switch the author, I'm guessing, uh, whenever you hit the, uh, whenever you choose the author. But to, Tyler, does that create problems for you guys? Like, how would you, how would you like that to work? Like, what would, what would the, your preference be? So you wanted the, the default login to be the client or the owner of the account? Yeah. I, I, I think that makes the most sense. I think what really makes the most sense is that you guys have a login as a marketer and the system knows that you're logging in and that it's you. Um, but yeah, if, 
if there's a better way than the way we do it now, please let us know. Um, I think part of it, Tyler, is like, isn't it a little bit easier to remember Andrew at and our password than everyone's? Like, th th does that not help that you have a global login? It's like a, you know, do you want to walk around the hotel with 800 keys or do you want the master key? So I guess the problem is if you're using the client's login, right? If you log in as Judy, what if Judy changed her password? You know what I'm saying? That's the problem. And then, uh, yeah, we also need to have you guys logging in as their marketer. So there has to be some global login for you guys because it's really important that we can show who did what, right? Like if you went in and made a change or they made a change, we, we want to be able to denote that. Um, but yeah, that that's actually a pretty simple one. My guess is that it defaults to Andrew because he's the master key. Um, yeah, exactly. Who's Andrew? I totally get it. Yep. We'll work on that. Cool. Good questions. All right. Any other questions? I think I answered all the ones in the thread. How will the old stuff look on the new site? New magic moments? Is there a way to make the list and blast uh, relevant to the new points? Yes. I showed you how to create a landing page. Um, yeah, Jillian, this is not, uh, Jillian's asking about pricing. And uh, the pricing right now doesn't matter to anybody on this call. But I, I will tell you guys that for the first, there's a thing that a lot of companies do called charter pricing, which is kind of like, hey, we've, we, we're trying this new thing and we want you to try it, but you know, we're just not sure how it's going to go. And so we would love you to uh, have a discount you know, out of the gates here. So there will definitely be a reduced price for small business for about 90 days. I uh, just don't want to get into the specifics of what that would be quite yet, but there will be charter pricing for SMB. Cool. So, so Tyler, if anybody else there, I know you've got the whole marketers. If you guys have questions, Jess, I don't know if you've got everybody in Boston there with you, but uh, my goal is to get to the point where everybody says, no, I feel like you showed me everything and I'm, I'm not going to be mad at you when it rolls out. Yeah, definitely, Jessica, you're absolutely right. Um, the the questions, like, one thing I would tell you guys is Steve and Mike have eliminated hundreds and hundreds of bugs and issues that you guys will never see. And we're about to do the same thing in sales, where between, you know, Neil and Amber and, and our team using the new sales tool, you know, 90% of the tickets we would get about that tool, we'll never get because we'll fix it before they get it. Um, but I, I couldn't agree more, Jess, that, you know, logging in and kind of playing around is really where the questions will come from. M my advice to the managers uh, on the call Friday, and then Tyler, I'm going to show the URL shortener. So my advice to the managers on Friday was, if you feel like you don't want to get behind, if you want to be an expert and you want to know more about the new curator than our clients, you need to really focus on the C tab right here. C, 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 C. Because you guys know how to use brain. The advertise tab is just a link of your ads. You know how to use blast. And magic moments is so simple that we think people might not need a training. It's like, here's the lead. Here's how many times they've engaged. You can follow them and you can reach out to them knowing everything they've ever done. So if, if you want to become an expert on the all new curator, you need to spend a ton of time in the C tab because that's where you go in and you grab the objects and you drag them over. That's where you edit them, you know, change the background. A lot of the settings I showed. The one thing that's a little tricky, like at least it was tricky for me to wrap my head around was like, you have visual editing, right? But then you also have settings-based editing for each object. So I can say, well, let's make this container width and let's make this green. But this is just the settings for this object, right? There's also settings for the page 
at large. So this little circle or this little gear up top, think of that as the settings for the whole page. And then the little gear on top of the object is just the settings for that object. So if I go here, that's where I get the hide header, hide footer. That's where I get a lot of advanced features. And this is for the page. Then you have your settings for each little widget, but you also have the ability to do visual editing like Yana showed. Uh, so you don't even have to actually go into the settings to edit what's there. So yeah, that'll be a little tricky, like adding objects, pulling over an object, and then going, okay, well, I want that to be a button call to action, but I actually want to go in and make that Facebook instead. Oh, you know what? Let's just do an exposed form. So this is where there'll be uh, questions, but like Jess, I know this isn't perfect, but like you can edit this, right? So you can sort of edit the form title. You know, before it used to say, uh, you know, get price and picks, right? So in theory, now you could say uh, get price and location, right? So there's, there's going to be ways to manipulate these forms a little bit, but not all the way. Um, in the future, though, you'll be able to choose the fields for sure. Yeah, and then Tyler was asking about the URL shortener, which is which is really cool. So I know a lot of times what you guys do now is you, uh, let's see, you publish a post, uh, perfect example, new and hottest listings. You copy that, and then you go to Bitly, okay? And then when you go to Bitly, basically paste it, and then you copy that, right? So it isn't like it takes that long. I mean, let's be honest, it, it took like less than two seconds. but then you have the link and then you can put the link in the ad. But I want you guys to take a step back and say, why? Why do we do this? And the only reason we do this is because a lot of times, like if you look at an actual listing, the freaking address is in the listing. See? So this is 911 Samantha CIR, whatever the fuck that means, right? And like, so you would, if somebody was smart, they would just copy that and they would Google the address and then they wouldn't have, so like even if there was a landing page, right? Like if this said slash full, the address is still right here. So just so you guys know, the only reason that we ever did Bitly was so that we could hide the ending of the URL, okay? That was the only reason we ever did it because CallieDalton.com is not a long URL. So let's say that this is Callie's listing and let's say you guys have to promote this for her and you want to use a different, uh, you know, she, if you look at the description, perfect starter home, right? So in theory, what you guys can do now, which is really cool is you can go to that page, uh, go to that page on the site. So let's pretend this is the listing page. Just bear with me. And all you would do, guys, is you would go to the settings of the page. And now it says it right here, URL slug. So I can actually make the URL for this perfect starter home and hit save. So now when you go to do your ad, it would be slash perfect starter home. So now you don't need Bitly. Now you can never use the same ending twice. So you want to get creative. But basically, if you did three bed, two bath, right? Like, there's a lot of things you could do. 90210, right? Charming, whatever. So now, if you want to do a custom URL, all you have to do is go to the settings of that page and right there, just put what you want the ending to be. So that's why in the future, it can be curator.com slash Jillian, curator.com slash Chris, curator.com slash calls. This is where we would do that. So like, if you ever want a custom domain, it's very simple and fast to do that. Now there will be some people where if their domain name's a little longer, like Joe Taylor group, and then you start doing slash three bed, two bath or something like it gets a little long, but not really. I mean, you guys use Facebook all the time. I don't think that's a super long link. See what I'm saying? So if you are using Bitly to hide the domain, you don't need to use it anymore. If you need to shorten the link so it's not like a two or three 
you know, line linked, most clients will be fine. Just if they have a super long domain name, might come up. All right. <clears throat> yeah. Great question, Jared. Uh, here's Jared's question. Jared's question is, this is more about messaging than user experience, but are there any predicted pain points for users as they change over? What transitional fires should we prep to be putting out for clients? And, and that's a great question, Jared. So basically, I want you to just look at the back end now. So I'm going to go to curator.com slash manage. Okay, so the biggest thing, Jared, is going to be this, like, with great uh, customization, you know, comes great challenges potentially. So as an example, um, you know, if I get rid of these objects, you, you have to remember that, uh, and Jimmy, the way Jimmy says this, there's, he's quoting someone, but he basically says, you know, don't forget that people actually get used to using your shitty interface, okay? Because it's true, like you have what you have and they fight through it or they don't. So if you look at this page, Jared, this is what people are used to seeing, right? They're used to going in and this is what WordPress does and Squarespace and everything else. So they're used to seeing sort of, you know, where you write your stuff and then they're used to inserting images like this, right? Um, and so what ends up happening is you just people just get used to doing it that way. It doesn't mean it's better or worse. It's just that they're used to it, just muscle memory, right? And as you guys know that use the stuff every day, you just, you know, you have little workarounds and figure stuff out. So the biggest challenge, I think, is going to be going from this, which is sort of impossible to mess up. But remember, the only thing that that can spit out is this. So it's sort of like if you're only if you only have one template that people can use, then you only have one sort of page like this that people have to use. So this feels like it has more training wheels. So this is going to be the challenging page, Jared, is like, what do I do? There's nothing there. How, where do I start? And so what Steve and Mike have been doing is that when people come in to build their sites and build posts and pages, we're going to make sure that they don't come right here and hit create content and end up right here, Jared. We're going to make sure that when they hit create content, it gives them templates to choose from. So that was sort of our biggest concern was like, if people have to literally start and add the hero, you know what I mean? And then they have to go in and change the hero image. And then they have to go in, you know what I mean? Like, that's so different than this, right? This is very straightforward, like headline, body, save. And so we are a little concerned that people will freak out when they see a blank page. Like if you wanted to make this a blog post, I don't think people will necessarily know what to do. So the idea of hitting object and then saying, hey, I need some text, right? So what we're trying to do, you guys, is we're trying to, like remember, right now we have one template and they're all the same. So what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to have 10 or 15 templates they can choose from and basically, when they choose a template, it's just a pre-made uh, stack of objects. Think of it that way. It's basically objects that are pre-made. Um, and that's it. So hopefully, that will be the big one. The other one, Jared, I think will be like site settings. Um, if you look at the back end of Curator now and you click on settings, um, you know, again, people just get used to this stuff. And there's very few options. So before, like, if you're like, well, how do I change the color? Oh, how do I change this, the font? Oh, where do I change the buttons, right? Like, there, there was nothing to, that you couldn't. And now, if you look at, like, the site editor, which is the tab in the top right, and you go to settings, there's some pretty awesome global themes. So you can see if I go to my theme settings, now I've got different headers. I've got different effects. I've got different footers. I can change the color, change the font. So I would say that like the first thing people are going to want to run in here and do is this page, which is the theme settings. So I would get real familiar with that. The other one that's a lot different is the menu. So this is the old menu. And the old menu has a preview of the blog 
plus a bunch of really high level categories. With the new menu, you've actually got subcategories. So see how we broke it down, like free tools and coaching, link, 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 link. Curator podcasts and live events, link, link, link. About curator, link, link, link. You can see the little custom icons. So this is going to be huge for time on site, user experience, page views per visitor, navigation. Like this is so much better than this <laughs> because a lot of times it's like the only reason we have, like look at it, we have conference and shop and the free ad grader. If you look at the new one, we took a lot of that and just put it in one place. So it's going to be really cool, but I just think people will miss it. That's right here in the settings as well, the menu settings. So you give this section a title, a description, you choose an icon, and now you've got a new menu. And the nice thing is you can still drag it and reorder it the way you could before. So that was one of our most popular features was custom menus. You can see our menu doesn't look anything like Judy's menu as an example. Uh, and you can still customize your menu now, just in a lot more detail. So my guess, Jared, is that people are gonna struggle with the C. I don't think we need to spend a lot of time on the magic moments, they're pretty self-explanatory. And then I think people are gonna just miss some of these global settings. I think they're gonna, they're gonna go a month and a half before they change the theme settings, because they didn't know they could. Um, now, one of the cool things we're gonna do is we're gonna add a setup wizard. And that way, when somebody goes through for the first time, it's gonna basically force them to make these choices. So they'll make five or six simple choices, and then that will spit out the beginning of their site. So I think that's gonna be huge. It's just right now, if somebody joins, they fill out a form, they hit submit, and when they hit submit, it doesn't do anything. Well, now it's gonna be similar. They're gonna fill out a form and hit submit, but when they hit submit, it'll actually build half their website, which is huge. Um, but yeah, like customizing the header and the footer, you know, what are the header navigation? Like when you look here and you see this stuff, you know, being able to see how it says download pricing guide. That's something we've never had before. So definitely some cool stuff in the header, in the footer. You can really customize it. Um, and before, again, the footer was what it was. Like this is the old footer. So the old footer was very basic. And now you've got uh, some pretty spectacular stuff happening in the new footer. People can actually like register by email in the footer without even clicking. So definitely a lot more choices there. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Jillian, you're right. Uh, that's one of our biggest things because I, I want to share with you guys what the flow will really look like, right? <coughs> Basically, what they'll do is they'll set up their site. But then as soon as they're done setting up their site, we've got about pages in Brain. Like we've got sales pages. We've got why hire us. Like in the future, guys, when people go to Brain, it'll say blast ads and pages. And then they can find pages based on searches or based on results. And they can just duplicate that page for their site. So what will happen is at the end of the setup wizard, let's say their home page, their about page, and their contact page is done. And then as soon as they finish the wizard, if it's a marketer client, we're going to be like, hey, you're all set. Your marketer will take it from here. If it's a non-marketer client, it'll say, hey, here's some pages you might want to add right now. And it'll take them into brain for pages where they can find pages like about or sales or event pages similar to this. So there'll be one more tab right here, blast, ads, pages. And the way most people will build their site, Jillian, is after they're done with the wizard, it will drive them into a place to find the other pages to add. Super cool. Yeah, yeah. So right now, Jess, all of the pages have stats. So Jess is asking, um, uh, where will there be stats for the pages um, and like the posts and stuff like that, there will be. So it'll be very similar to like with, if you're doing email, right? Uh, the kind of data you have is like highest open, highest click. If you're doing ads, the kind of data you have is most clicks or most shares, et cetera. 
So what will happen, Jess, is when they do the pages, it'll be sorted by most visits, most time on site, most social shares, uh, most page views per visitor. Absolutely. And so when they find pages, they'll have all the same data to back up that page as they do an ad. So this will be a way to use data driven decisions to build a website, which I've, I've never seen that done before. Um, we're basically building your website. There's a pretty cool, uh, I can show you guys a little example of this. Uh, Lead Pages has a thing by called sort by conversion rate. And um, th that's sort of all they have and it's a very basic feature. But you can see right there, Jess, it'll sort of be like this. Um, you know, you can see the most recent stuff in Brain, but you could sort it by conversion rate. So show me all the landing pages with the highest conversion rate and that'll show up in Brain. So this is a very, very exciting uh, part of the new curator is uh, that we'll have pages right here. But we just really can't connect that, Jess, until we have the new site. So once people start using the new site, we'll be able to pull that right in. But very exciting for sure. Cool. Well, I think this is a pretty good use of the hour. Thank you guys so much for all the questions. If you, if you think of anything else, you know, slack it to me. I think now that you guys are seeing it for the second and the third and the fourth time, it's starting to make sense. You know, my takeaway again is when you guys get in there, master the C. That's going to be the one that you guys are going to be better, faster, stronger at than anyone else. Uh, one thing I didn't show, and we're going to keep working on this, but you, you guys could even start doing custom stuff. See how you could actually drag over an embed? So the whole purpose of this is just to paste code. So you could insert things like Instagram like we can do now. There's a map feature, which is super cool, but you could actually do a custom embed. So if somebody has some kind of widget or you guys find you know some kind of really cool tool, you know, in theory, this whole page is blank, right? So if I just add a custom embed and I add my HTML in there, just drop it right in here, then in theory, that's a whole custom page because somebody that's really good with HTML could build the whole page in the code, paste the code, and then that would build a whole custom page. And then of course, because you could make that page your homepage, uh, you could basically have a custom homepage. It's gonna be fun to see what people do with that embed feature because it really makes the sky the limit. Yeah, great question, Jess. Uh, Jess asked, and I wish I had a link to this. Jimmy sent me a link to this. Um, I hope I could find it, Jess, because I'd rather show you than tell you. I did show all the marketers here, uh, and they were pumped. Oh, yeah, here we go. Perfect. So this is super cool. So Jess's question is, will we be able to denote in the new curator if the thing was created by marketers or the clients themselves? And I'm pumped to announce that the answer is yes. So if you look at the new interface, uh, right now, there's a star. So if let me go back real quick. Uh, let me just log back into the real one. All right. So right now, you guys, if you find an email you like, you hit star. And then that puts that into my faves. That also puts that into your templates. With the new curator, we're actually going to have an additional icon next to the star that's gonna be our curator logo. And if the logo is red, it means it was built by us. And if the logo is empty, it means it was an amateur design done by our clients. And what'll happen is if you hover over either of those two, it'll explain what it means. And we're gonna make the C a clickable link back to sign up for marketer. Cool. Glad you like it, Jess. I hope Lisa and everybody else is able to see that too. But that was definitely one of our highest priorities. And then that gives us at least the ability, you know what I mean? We don't have to do this, but we could say, hey, marketer clients get marketer client stuff. It, you know, we're not going to do that right away, but it's an option. It also becomes an option to sort by professional versus sort by amateur. Um, but it, what it does more so than anything else is it gives credit where credit's due. I mean, shit, every time I log into Brain, you guys have the stuff at the top anyway. So now we'll just make that official, you know, especially with the ads. I mean, gosh, the, the, the ads, you know, with any budget that do the best are a lot of times you guys is ads. So I think it's fair. You know, I don't know who this is, the Velocio team. 
I don't know who the Bruner Burkhart group is, but are those both marketer clients? I mean, they might be. I don't see the embellishment on the pick. Uh, so the answer might be no. This is obviously one I think you guys probably did here for Will Stein. So one one thing I'll be I'll tell you guys, just be careful what you ask for, because now you're competing. You know, you're competing with Joe. You're competing with Leslie, whoever the hell these people are. Um, yeah, Will Stein is Lisa's customer. So our goal is that, you know, 90% of the stuff that does the best was created by a curator. And that people start to see that and that they realize like, oh, these are, you know, the marketers are the ones cranking this stuff out, not the agent themselves. And we think that will, uh, you know, say... St. John or Jean or whoever here and Rhett, like, you, you know, we can almost always tell when it's your work. Now the rest of the clients will be able to tell that as well. Um, and we think they're just going to basically get scared into submission that they just see how much of the work is you guys and they just kind of give up. Anyway, I know we have our uh, events call starting right now, Jillian. Sorry to keep everybody over, but hopefully this was helpful. Like I said, if you guys have any more questions, put them in Slack. The fact that we're running out of questions, the fact that I've kind of shown everything is a good thing. You know, we want you guys to uh, feel great about this. I can tell you that uh, just in closing, I don't usually show my wife anything because she doesn't care. Uh, she, she could actually, oh, that was Logan's client. Thank you, Jess. Um, she, you know, my wife doesn't care and she doesn't want to care. But I, I asked her, I said, you know, hey, babe, can I just show you what we're releasing this week? Because it really is cool. It really is the best work of my life. And it really is, you know, a game changer for people. So I, I did about a two minute demo for my wife. I walked her through Brain. I walked her through Create. I walked her through Blast. And I walked her through Magic Moments. And she was blown away. She's just like, oh, my God. This is really, really good. You guys should be proud of yourselves. And so for her to say that and then, you know, to have the conversation with Allie and for Allie's, you know, instant feedback after hearing about this to say, wow, you guys have redefined what an all in one means. You know, those are the little indicators I look for. You know, if my wife's impressed, if my friends are impressed, if our, you know, contract workers are impressed, you got to feel like the public is going to be pretty damn impressed, too. Um, cause my wife doesn't care about sales or marketing and she was still impressed. So I think that's really the key is we want to build stuff that even if you show it to your mom, they would understand it, even if they never used it and things like points and bells and brains, you know, those are very consumer centric terms, uh, that most people understand. So anyway, thank you guys for your time, Jillian. Uh, we'll hop on the mar uh, event call now, but thanks so much guys. And tomorrow's going to be a fun day. Hey, this is Chris. Thanks for listening to my call. If you enjoyed the call, please subscribe right now. Also share the episode and use the hashtag calls with Chris. Every week I choose a few people randomly to win a free signed copy of the conversion code, my USA Today best-selling book. You can also visit curator.com. That's C-U-R-A-Y T-O-R dot com to learn more about my company, which is the one I'm running during these calls. We help small businesses grow faster, and we've been featured recently by Inc., Forbes, Fortune, and Entrepreneur Magazine.